welcome back to my channel my name is jessica with a yk if you're new here hello totally appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel if you like videos about cosmetic procedures product reviews beauty lifestyle things like that because i will be posting more videos soon for today's video i'm gonna talk about liposuction from experience and things that i've learned about liposuction that not a lot of plastic surgeons will tell you when you're in their office um, going in for surgery like this and you know you really have to dig to find i feel like the truth about a lot of cosmetic procedures or plastic surgeries and things like that so i'm going to share with you my experience and things that i wish i would have known prior to getting liposuction and things that were hard to get an answer on. The procedure that I had was lipo360 and basically I had liposuction to all of my abdomen, my flanks, my upper back, kind of this bra line here. I had liposuction on my arms and I had that fat transferred to my breasts because I wanted to get a breast augmentation without getting implants. So I'd gained some weight and you know I knew this year that I wanted to start losing weight, but at the same time I didn't want to waste all of this fat that I had gained over the past couple of years because I knew in my heart that I just, I didn't want to get breast implants. So, I opted to get lipo 360 and have the fat removed and transferred to my breasts and got a very natural looking breast augmentation. The breast augmentation is for a completely other video. If you want me to make that video, leave a comment below and let me know, but I'm not really going to be talking about that because this video is about a liposuction. So the number one thing that I feel like is really important to share about liposuction is that it is not by any means a simple quick cut no downtime procedure i feel like the media and surgeons and people in general make liposuction just like oh no big deal it's just lipo you know just another one and done wham bam thank you ma'am and that is not the case liposuction is a very very serious procedure it hurts like a biatch it is extremely painful but anyone who tells you that it's not is a liar it takes a lot to recover i mean you're not gonna go get liposuction and go oh i'm back to work you're gonna want at least two to three weeks to recover before you're back at work or back to your normal routine it, it is really painful and i experienced <laughs> I was just like in hell for truly like two weeks straight. Liposuction in total takes about three to six months to completely heal for everything to be settled, for you to not be sore and in pain. Like I just, I don't know how to describe it, but it's just, it's not, it's not a simple procedure. Like that's what I want to get across. And I'm not trying to deter you from getting liposuction if you want it because, you know, as awful as it is or as painful as it was to recover from it, you know, you're going to recover. So one of the main things that a lot of people don't know about liposuction is that you are going to be draining liquid from your incisions. Now, I have a clip that I'm going to put in here. And you can see in the clip basically what I'm talking about, what your incision is and what your what is being drained. So you can see the doctor create a little hole inside of wherever they're, you know, the liposuction point of where they're going to take fat from. There's a little hole and they're jamming in that needle and breaking down the fat and sucking it out, right? So when they finish taking that out, you're going to see that little hole like you're going to have an open wound every single spot that they went in and you know took out lipo so you're going to have a little hole and you're not supposed to heal these holes right after surgery you're supposed to let them stay open breathe because 
when you get liposuction, you are pumped with a bunch of saline and fluids to help prevent infection, to help the process of the liposuction. So you are going to be really, really bloated with a ton of fluids inside of you, blood, and also the saline that's injected into you when they're pumping, you know, when they're extracting the fat out of you to make sure that it's sanitary. And all of that stuff needs to come out because if it doesn't, then you're at risk for things like fibrosis and infection and swelling. It takes longer for your liposuction to heal and then it can cause possible complications. You need to make sure all of that liquid comes out of you. So how does the liquid come out of you? Well, they're either going to attach these little tubes and drains to you that you're gonna have to keep on you um, to drain out the liquid. I didn't have drains, so I can't really talk too much on like my experience with that. But if you don't have drains, you're just gonna have little holes in your body that leak. Um, <laughs> and eventually those little holes are gonna end up being where your scars are. So there will be scars with liposuction. They will eventually fade and can possibly fade. They might stick around. Um, and you're gonna be draining liquids and blood and all kinds of fluids from your little liposuction points where they went in and took out the fat. So in my experience, when I got out of the surgery room, my sister picked me up and I we didn't prepare for all of this drainage that was gonna happen. We had no idea the extent of fluid drainage that was gonna happen post liposuction i was literally like a faucet leaking i got into my sister's car i soaked her entire seat was like wet disgusting with all of the blood and the saline and the fluids that were releasing out of my incision holes and that's something you need to prepare prepare for so like if someone's picking you up from surgery they need to prepare their car make sure that you have like a trash bag over it make sure you have like um, gauze and things like that wrapped all around your incision sites so that all of the liquid that's draining is being absorbed by these gauze pads and things like that. I'll go ahead and show you what my incisions look like and where I was draining kind of towards the end of this video after I go through everything. I was staying at my sister's house because she was taking care of me post-surgery so I was staying in their guest bedroom on the guest bed. We had to line the entire bed with like trash bags with the improvise. Towels, old towels, and tape me up with gauze everywhere that I was leaking and draining from. Because like, basically just imagine if you're pissing yourself from a bunch of different holes on your body. Like it's just like, it's just coming out. It's just coming out and oozing out everywhere and there's nothing you can do about it. You need this stuff to come out of your body and you're gonna make a mess everywhere that you are. Like that's just is what it is. So you will soak your bed you will soak whoever's car <laughs> picked you up i'm just saying from personal experience perhaps there are people that had this procedure and they didn't drain as much or maybe they had the little drains and like a little bottle attached where they drained into the bottle i didn't have that something else to be taken into consideration is along with this drainage and all of this drainage that's happening you need assistance with this drainage because if you're not, you know, trying to really get get rid of all of this stuff and massaging yourself and moving all of the fluids that are stuck in your body and draining and pushing it out and getting rid of it, it's going to stay in there way longer and it's going to create that buildup that you don't want because that's when it can harm your liposuction results and cause issues and problems. So you need to get lymphatic drainage massages. Lymphatic drainage massages are not cheap. You're gonna need a series of them. It was so essential and so important. It was like my saving grace. I looked forward to these massages every single day. And I got these massages immediately, like day after surgery, I was getting lymphatic drainage massages. And that was recommended to me by my surgeon. So I had a total of about eight or 10 massages and look, I got my surgery in Miami, so in Miami, well, you can find the someone who knows someone who knows someone who does the lymphatic post-massage, you know, drainage and all of that, and they'll come to your house. So 
I got a pretty good deal for my massages. I paid $100, $80 plus tip. So I was paying like $100 for each lymphatic drainage massage and they were an hour. And you have to be careful where you choose to get your lymphatic drainage massages because it is a medical basically procedure and I think um, you have to be like certified or an RN to drain. Don't quote me on that because I don't know I'm just like remembering what was said to me at like a massage place that I went to that could not do proper lymphatic drainage massages. So after you get lipo you need a proper lymphatic drainage massage which means they are moving the liquid out of your body all of that build up and saline fluid and stuff that was left in your body and they're pushing it towards the hole your incision hole and that stuff is coming out of the incision hole now not everybody is trained and not everyone is allowed to fully drain and push out the liquid so it co is coming out of your body so a lot of lymphatic drainage massages are not clear in their description that they're actually not going to drain the liquid out of the hole for you. So you need to make sure that whatever lymphatic drainage massage place you go to is going to actually physically remove the liquid because a lot of them will just do a nice little cute soft massage like, oh yeah, mm -hmm, it's lymphatic drainage. But when it gets to that point in the hole, which is what you really need is to get all this fluid out of your system, they ain't doing it because they're not qualified and they can't. Uh, legally do it. So you need to make sure you find a masseuse that is a legally trained, knows what they're doing to remove these liquids out of your body. Like you should see all of the liquid on the table, on the on the massage table. Like y'all will be getting real intimate with this. Okay. It helps you heal so much faster and it helps to prevent, you know, bumps and lumps and things like that that might take a really long time to heal post lipo if you're not getting these massages if you think about it that's an extra thousand dollars that is added to your tab when you're getting liposuction the next thing that you need to know about liposuction is that you have to wear a compression garment or a faja and these are expensive you need several garments i would say about two to three garments because when you're draining all of these fluids and these liquids you need to wash your garment and while that one's washing you need one to wear because you need that compression this is the garment or a garment that i used zips up it's softer material around the breasts since i had my fat transfer to the breasts and then everything else is very tight compression so this is one garment, so it's full compression on the stomach, on the arms, and all along the back. And then I got the same one in black, because this honestly was the most comfortable garment that I could find. And I hated this one. This one was absolute hell. And it didn't include any compression for the arms, but since I did have my arms lipoed, I needed an arm compression garment when wearing this one. So I had to buy the arm compression garment, which is, I mean, this was brutal. This hurt. This was just so uncomfortable. I could barely lift my arms up. This is lipo foam, and basically the way that it's used, this is a pretty good example, is you shove it into your garment and it helps keep the liposuction areas smooth and flat and allows for a tighter compression to continue and help reduce your swelling. This is an ab board and this is a back board and these are also used inside of the garment. So you slip this right in the abdomen area on your stomach and it's a little harder of a structure so that it can really keep that area flat and help for a smoother result without bumps and things like that. And then I wanted to show a quick example of the gauze. These are like the surgical gauze dressings and you just tape it on your skin across the incisions like you would a band-aid, you know, like it's like a, a big band-aid and this is surgical tape. 
so that it can collect the fluids that are coming out of your body. And these garments, baby, I'll tell you, the garments were hell. They're really uncomfortable. You have to wear them for about a month straight. I'll drain all day long. It's uncomfortable, but I'll drain. But that faha was my literal death sentence. So you have to wear compression socks to help prevent embolisms, and you have to wear the compression garment. You have to sleep in it. And that was pure hell. I mean, I was just itching and scratching. You're wearing something so tight. It's truly uncomfortable. You have to wear it under your clothes. You have to go to work, you know, wearing your compression garment still. It's just not fun. I don't know what else to say about the compression garment. One of the other things that I think is really important to explain about liposuction is fat cells and what is happening to your fat cells and how you're going to gain weight and lose weight going forward. No, liposuction is not permanent. You can gain weight and over time you will gain weight in the places that you had liposuction. It happens. But you have less fat cells in wherever it is that you got lipo from. So you're going to gain weight in other places that have more fat cells that were not liposuctioned and didn't have their fat cells breaking, broken down in that area. For example, if you get liposuction on your stomach and you didn't get any liposuction on your arms and you start gaining weight, well, you know, maybe you're going to gain weight, a little more weight on your arms than you would on your stomach because you have your stomach lipo and there's less fat cells there. You'll start gaining it in other areas first and a little bit will go back to the places that you were lipoed, but it might end up causing disproportionate results. It's just scary. Imagine you get your entire stomach lipoed, right? And then you don't get your your like upper back rolls lipoed and then when you start gaining weight you got huge back rolls and your stomach flat Gah. Gah. something you also need to keep in mind when getting liposuction is proportions in general you know if you make your waist look smaller then what is gonna look bigger? Do you know what I mean? Okay, you get your waist liposuctioned in and cinched in. Okay, well then your back is gonna look broader, your arms are gonna look broader, your legs and your you know butt will look bigger because you're looking in proportion. So proportions are something that I think a lot of people ignore and a lot of surgeons ignore. Doctors just isolate when they're thinking about what they're doing to your body and they're not looking at it as a whole picture and it's your job to look at your body as an entire picture and think about the future of what your body's gonna look like. I think I've covered all of what I wanted to cover about liposuction that I feel isn't really talked about a lot. Um, so now I'll go ahead and show you my lipo results and this is a part of the video <laughs> that I was really dreading because I am still trying to lose weight this year. Um, you know, I got liposuction because I wanted to be able to start my weight loss journey. My body for me is still a work in progress. I'm not saying anyone else needs to lose weight. I'm not saying that anyone else needs to get liposuction. This is just what I wanted to do. Okay, so. Post lipo. And you can see, like, there's you know it's not perfect and this is also because i still have like fat that i want to lose here so yeah it's a little um lipo -y, i guess we could say um here's kind of a side angle of it and you know there's definitely a little curvature here a little bulge here um looking at the back my back was lipoed so a lot of my lipo scars and things like that. These little scars here are from when they went in and injected the fat in my breasts. And this, these little scars here are from where they injected to remove fat from my stomach. These are also, you know, the little holes that were draining and leaking all kinds of fluids. Okay, and for, for the arm liposuction, um, I have a scar here. 
this is where they went in. And I have a scar here. You can see this is where they went in. That is all I have for you. That is my liposuction review. Let me know if that helped. Let me know if that makes sense or if I didn't explain something right. And let me know if you had liposuction and what your experience was with it. I can definitely post more videos like if you want me to make a post lipo materials video or the breast fat transfer video um, I'm definitely open to doing that just let me know in the comments below and again thank you so much for watching please like comment and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this thanks bye